Hi everyone. This is Pradeep Khanna from Sydney in Australia. In a city which is currently under lockdown. About 2 weeks back we had 50% of the country's population in lockdown. So this is the brave new world. This is the new normal when we are living and working. No, Can no, I no, ask no, everybody no, to be on mute please. I will mute everybody at you know this is the new normal and this is the brave new world where we will be living working socializing adapting to changing circumstances of potentially low probability high impact events let's kick off today and we pick up the format which we had kick started last time and that was you know getting some senior alumni to walk their journey post iit delhi and by senior i don't necessarily mean in terms of years of passing out by senior i refer to people who are following their passion as well as achieving great milestones along with that we also kick off a session from iit delhi alumni association executive council those hidden body of people who seem to be doing hard work but nobody really knows them so we need to recognize those people as well and realizing that gcc iit da iit and other stakeholder groups all have to work together in an integrated approach so i will also be kick starting getting a faculty member from iit delhi to be speaking and talking about the journey in this forum today we have two lovely people with whom i will be discussing their journey post iit and being the gentleman that i am i keep repeating again and again i will start with the ladies first so i am delighted to introduce to you ruchira sharma a wonderful person who has potentially in a short time post iit has gone through some number of interesting changes and at the moment is the regional head for skills transformation for kusera who doesn't know kusera kusera were the first platform in the world to come out with moocs or massive open online courses but more importantly now they are a global entity in skills transformation so ladies and gentlemen please give a round of applause to ruchira i will not say anything else about her because i want her to walk us through her journey so a round of applause please hey i'm not seeing your hands come on now okay over to you ruchira thank you thank you so much uh, pradeep for that wonderful introduction uh, it seems to me that i have really large shoes to fill uh, only on the back of the introduction that you just gave me um but i'm really delighted to be a part of this group i i didn't expect us to be nearly 20 uh, odd so it's really heartwarming to be connected to you all um uh, by way of introduction i am a 2011 grad Uh, from iit delhi i um, was in uh, himadri hostel for those of you who are aware this was the second girls hostel that came up uh, in i think uh, in the early 2000s and um, i was a biotech major but like uh, most confused uh, iit delians i didn't pursue uh, you know biotechnology i was not really keen on uh, picking up a phd uh, or 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 going after research and i was kind of confused when i was about to graduate 
because I didn't have opinions of my own. My opinions, I had, it's almost as if I had deferred thinking to those around me. So I would look to, you know, the seniors or, or, or companies that would visit campus to help define what I, I, what I should and should not do. And that led me to actually uh, trying my hand at management consulting. So for the two years after BCG, I was a management consultant. After IIT, I was a management consultant with BCG. And um, I must say it was a really interesting experience because I, it made it really clear to me as to what I don't want in life. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I kind of realized that, um, first of all, early on uh, in life, uh, you know, one should be open to taking risks, open, and I'm calling them risks, but rather open to uh, going after unknown territory just because one can. I think that's the shield or the blanket that IIT Delhi provides us all, which is that we all we all know we always have a very soft cushion to you know kind of fall back on. So so why not try something different? And and that's what led me to uh, working uh, in the Public Health Foundation of India after IIT. And uh, this was a pay cut. I took a pay cut of uh, I was earning one third. I was making one third of what I was making in BCG. And so while it wasn't really a uh, matter of consideration for me but for my grandparents and for my parents and for their friends it was something that that is really difficult to wrap their heads around and they would ask me ki ye iit ke logo ko kuch alag kyu karna hota hai why can't you just do what's normal you know why do you have to prove yourself why do you have to do something different is this something and my mom used to say that you know these people have something up in their mental makeup ki inka dimag kuch alag tarike se chalta hai and you know it's very difficult for us to <laughs> kind of wrap our head around it but for me i would say the one thing that's been a big big um uh first day i feel like we have you know mammoth uh shoes to fill the the seniors that came before us actually established the brand iit and thanks to them there are a lot of benefits that we reaped and one of those benefits is um always having choice i think the the freedom that one enjoys um just because one knows that there is something to fall back on and sometimes it's it's the intangibles that make a lot more difference to one's professional journey than the tangibles. I really feel like the confidence that I have thanks to the network that not only IIT Delhi provides, but the IITs at large, knowing that someone is a fellow brethren, you know, a fellow engineer, uh, it just, uh, the, the, one gets access to a very different uh, mind space altogether, you know, the kind of people that one gets to interact with. So that made, that helped me be really fearless. Uh, in terms of decision making, I, I did, however, come back to, you know, the, the, the regular chartered paths that my parents wanted me to, I did come back to, um, uh, you know, so-called so well-earning jobs, but even there, I felt like, uh, you know, I, I was finally in a place where I could make decisions based on what I wanted to do as opposed to what should one should do. So not making decisions on the basis of brand value or on the basis of money, but truly on the basis of saying, if I were doing a certain piece of work day in and day out, is that going to make me happy? And, and the only person I'm answerable to is myself, not my, you know, LinkedIn network or, 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 or the, the folks around you. And I believe that's ultimately what led me to joining Coursera as well. And I was glad, grateful that I was connected to Pradeep um, during this time. Uh, Coursera, as most people know it, um, is a platform where people, you know, learners like you and I can independently go and learn. But what's really interesting was that um, uh, less than five years back, Coursera started its enterprise side of the business, uh, which means that uh, the focus, the team that I'm a part of, we are going after organized learning, uh, whether that takes place in a university setting or it takes place in a corporate setting. And uh, this is one area where I believe that if any uh, country wishes to be competitive, one has to think global. And that's what I think Coursera enables us to do. Uh, I know I'm taking a lot of time, so I will, uh, this is just one last thing I wanted to put out there. Which no, no, is you, that have, I, you have time. So I have kept 15 minutes for each speaker and you are just six minutes into it at the moment. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Thanks for that. So, um, so the Pradeep and I were having a very interesting conversation just this week, uh, where we were discussing where India stands um, in the global scheme of things. And um, 
you know, I, I'm actually, my father was, uh, he just retired from the military engineering services. So I've grown up in a stream of army schools. We've, you know, I've sung the national anthem every morning. So I have, I'm really passionate about making sure that India emerges globally competitive and that there aren't any disadvantages that, uh, you know, the, the, the next generation of folks face simply because they were born in this country. And from that aspect, we were just discussing, you know, Pradeep was asking me, in the Coursera um, uh, field of vision, where does India really stand? And the truth of the matter is that the dollars aren't here. Uh, the dollars are coming from Middle East or from Europe or some of those developed markets. Needless to say, the numbers are, the volumes are, the number of learners are. So after the US, India is the largest uh, learner base for Coursera. However, that's not enough. And I think that we shouldn't, uh, you know, uh, pat ourselves on the back simply because we make up numbers for a company. What's interesting is that, at least in the field of education, I see India leading the world in terms of the next phase of learning as defined by this uh, incident, which was COVID-19. And just to expand on what I mean by that, I'm finding that uh, India has been setting the tone for Coursera in terms of what online education would mean in future. Uh, I'm finding that we are uh, greatly enabled by uh, the, the regulatory environment in the country. And the new education policy is, uh, is one moniker of that. But there is a lot of openness. There's a lot of intent, uh, even on the part of the government, to make sure that we are all globally competitive as far as education is concerned, and that there are no barriers. Uh, contrast this to developed markets like a South Korea or you know some of uh, some really advanced developed markets in Europe, even France for that matter, where um, uh, one by law cannot provide credit for anything that one learns online. So you know if I'm a university student, I may spend 20 hours learning data science from Johns Hopkins, but it doesn't give me any credit in my formal education. And so that's a huge barrier. And um, from that aspect, I see India leading the way because um, I, I feel really proud to talk about how for Coursera, the central growth engine has been the university business you know, Coursera being adopted by universities to educate their students. And in fact, this line of business was crafted by the India team. So it was in the India market that this uh, business idea was conceptualized. It was tested. Uh, and uh, the universities in, uh, in India, whether they are public universities or private universities, big or small, tier one or tier two or tier three, they've all been highly uh, embracing of this new frontier of education. There are students today for whom uh, more than one uh, third of their credits actually come from online education. Uh, and they might be sitting in a Kolhapur, but they are, um, uh, you know, studying from University of Michigan or Johns Hopkins, like I said, or Yale or Princeton. And that I think is the true strength that uh, India has been able to unlock in the Coursera uh, scheme of things. We're also a very important market for Coursera. There's a lot of investment uh, that's happening here. Uh, when I joined a year back, so I'm only a year old in the system. When I joined a year back, I was a 37th employee. And today we are a 100 member team strong um, here in India. Uh, the India team is also the one that serves the rest of Asia. So uh, whether it's Australia or, or New Zealand or South Korea, all the way to Pakistan, uh, Sri Lanka, Kazakhstan, all of these countries are also served by the India team. And, and, and that's what gives me pride. I, I like that there is something that Indians are better at uh, and that we are leading the way. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, I think, what really excites me. So that's let, me let me ask you a question, uh, This spot that you've got on your forehead, is this the Bindi or is it the Kalatika? No, this is a bindi. It's supposed to look red. I don't know if it's looking black, but it's supposed <laughs> to look red. <laughs> no. Why I asked was because I've been seeing that Indian idol and, you know, every time they keep putting those uh, uh, kala tikas to that female, you know. So I thought, kala tika ta nahi hai, you know. Hmm? But okay, now coming back, there's a, you see, in between BCG and your current job, <clears throat> where were you? Yeah, so it was uh, multiple stops midway, Pradeep. So I, I joined the Public Health Foundation of India. I worked there for a couple of years. Uh, I was in, with the, in the office of, the, of our CEO, Dr. Reddy, who is um, uh, a very leading global expert when it comes to public health. And, and the whole premise behind PHFI was that in India, there's a lot of focus on tertiary healthcare 
so we'll have a lot of aims investment behind you know erecting aims or erecting super specialty hospitals but at the point at the time uh, there wasn't really a lot of focus behind preventive care and holistic care and even social determinants on health so how does um, uh, you know women's health how do gender inequality how does that seep into health care uh, and so that's an area that we were working on um, i was a restless young early 20 something uh, professional and and i did realize for myself that i i i like to see change happening fast uh, you know and whereas in okay. that world so the next question <laughs> like i always tell a lot of people that i mentor saying that you got to find your passion and follow your passion uh, but you know the thing is that passion doesn't always pay the bills so when you took a pay cut from bcg did you come down to like having you know chai in five stars to dhabas that's a very interesting question pradeep in fact that was one of the reasons why we at iit wanted to work in the consulting industry because we were told ki aapko five star hotel mein mil rehne ko milega but um, fortunately or unfortunately in the very first week i realized that that doesn't bring you happiness uh, you know glamour is something that one has in life for the benefit of the other so mere grandparents ko bahut acha lagta hai sabko batane mein mere parents ko bahut acha lagta hai but it's not something that it it, it just it doesn't increase my happiness quotient you know it doesn't and the other thing i realized is that uh, there is some work there's a nature of work that is unable to create happiness it can create unhappiness in life but it cannot create additional happiness additional happiness has to come from doing something that you find is a calling within and that was a real big learning for me and fortunately i was very young mai hamesha se apne parents ke sath rehti hu to mujhe kabhi bhi difference lifestyle mein koi difference nahi raha they were paying the rent they were cooking for me and all of that but uh, <clears throat> for me the one big reason where why i like you rightly said you know passion where the rubber meets the road where does that friction happen is because i realized that thanks to bcg i was used to a very fast pace of execution and that's something that i found missing in the public sector we had to work very closely with the government and i was acutely aware of how slowly things are moved and i at that point i think it was also lack of patience maybe immaturity but i had no patience for you know chai pe charcha just having tea and discussing you know the entire universe but not getting down to doing anything more and and so i realized that there has to be another way where you can make things happen fast and make changes on the ground and thankfully i i did receive that opportunity it's not something so i'm not smart enough to orchestrate it on my own but the universe helped me to find that way um i i received a chance to work in the venture capital industry where uh, we realized as a thesis that if we were um investing behind marketplaces we were able to touch livelihoods of a lot of people and uplift them so thinking i'm thinking uber drivers i'm thinking swiggy uh, delivery partners but no these are already platforms that have been set there's a second order of innovation that can happen today where we can provide you know health insurance so organized health insurance to you know swiggy partners or or uh, in corsera we've been we are one of our customers is actually in the a, a fleet operator in asia and they've been talking about how their children can receive um, uh, credits to use corsera for their own education so thankfully the venture industry showed me that one can uh, make change happen on the ground and make it happen really fast too fast for everybody's comfort but that's where i found myself uh, for about 5 years before i joined corsera fabulous so this is excellent and let me tell the group that corsera had come out with a global skills survey which has a couple of dimension and one of them of course is a country dimension and uh, uh, you know sometime in the future um, we will ask ruchira uh, ruchira to look at whether we can you know not only present this but also play around that global skills uh, framework in this forum so i thoroughly enjoyed listening to you and i'm sure everybody else enjoyed as well so thank you so much for you know joining us today and i look forward to your continuing engagement with this platform please give a round of applause to ruchira and i love that bit about um you know giving bcg and taking you know uh, such a big pay cut of course i won't advise that to my daughter 
uh, but yes the youngsters everybody has to follow their passion you know so take care and let's move on to the other speaker of the day today which is uh, another iit alumni and now we go across to toronto and you see living in australia you know we don't have snow once i landed in toronto and the temperature was minus 8 degrees and i was shivering and the locals over there were jumping with joy man what a lovely weather because they have temperatures of minus 20 and minus 30 as my dear friend vijay and you know other people so our next iit delhi alumni raju i have never actually been able to pronounce his surname properly you know so i i split it into two words you know gote t and i will ask him whether i have pronounced it rightly or not but a lovely guy who is vice president for coin you know that coin of money coin so um, what does coin stand for but he you know vice president coin for tcs and it is lovely to know you see when i was with ibm and heading global delivery um tcs had 300000 people at that time worldwide accenture had 300000 people at that time ibm had uh, what uh, 540000 people at that time worldwide cap gemini had about 100000 people worldwide tcs tcs today is over 500000 people it's a fabulous story um it's a fabulous journey but now a big round of applause for raju raju over to you thank you pradeep uh, for the introduction uh, very happy to be here seeing all of you on the screen uh, coming from various diverse backgrounds uh, all of all of you you know would love to hear everyone's story but we have limited time uh, so i'll tell my story today uh, and um, always uh, you know wanting to learn from everyone the process of discovery of oneself is probably the journey most of us are going through okay and we bump into n number of different environments and uh, you know the learning part which was let's say a carry forward from what ruchira has said is an important aspect of it i finished my bachelor's in technology in mechanical engineering in 1985 Uh, and um there was in the jwala hostel uh, had a great time um i remember that uh, rendezvous in 1984 some of us went to the uh, seventh floor all the way up rang the bell <laughs> in the midnight <laughs> and that was like some kind of an achievement of sorts let's say at that time uh just uh, remembering you know and my classmate navel jaggi is here hey navel nice to see you <laughs> and uh, he's in uh, singapore and that is really great um i think the way uh, we bonded uh, during our bachelor's days um, was really great and it is uh, so nice to see that we can just pick up a phone and talk to our colleagues i mean our, our you know classmates at that time and really that's the power of the alumni i think it's once a person gets into an iit finally you know it's an alumni being an alumni for life and that's the beauty of this whole thing um after finishing my uh, iit btech uh, i did a couple of things i joined tcs at that time but then i got an offer from uh, memorial university in canada uh, for doing a masters so i took the plane went there um, you know with a fellowship and from a plus 45 degree centigrade in delhi i landed up in uh, minus 15 degree centigrade at st johns <laughs> and i was there for a huge shock for sure you know i said hey what what's this what's i mean you know my dad actually gave me his best coat that he had in germany uh, it is a nice beautiful brown coat and it was like a prized possession uh but when i landed even you know that code was not enough <laughs> okay so there was uh, there was another student who picked me up at the airport and you know it it was a great journey um i did my masters in ocean engineering and um at memorial uh, fluid mechanics uh, was one of my favorite at iit delhi 
then there were a lot more other uh, favorites you know there was jp subramaniam who was a faculty in mechanical engineering who was uh, my uh, guide for doing the final year project in air pollution so i had a project on adsorption of uh, pollutants from the atmosphere uh, and i had a whole apparatus set up and uh, we were doing experiments to see how we can reduce air pollution through this particular method and those days 80 485, I really used to wonder, will this project ever have any value? You know, the air is so clean. You know, why am I doing this particular project? And, uh, and you know, we, of course, you know, we had very good results. Uh, we had a way to reduce the pollution by about 30% and all that. But then later, much later, I realized that how important that project is and how it has been used in multiple ways uh, to reduce air pollution, not just in Delhi, but around the world. Another uh, person I remember very fondly is Dinesh Mohan. He was in biomedical engineering, recently passed away. Uh, truly appreciate his passion. I was really inspired by him right from the first class when he said that, uh, you know, he was talking about uh, car accidents and that the bumpers of the cars, you know, they were made of metal. Uh, and he was really uh, evangelizing the fact that they should be plastic and you know he was talking about how the, some of the best cars in the world are made of etc especially the buses he, he really was passionate about that uh, topic and safety on the roads in particular Jitesh Gupta professor he was in again mechanical engineering he was involved in teaching uh, me and my classmates uh, in the in the area of how does failure occur in metals through just pure vibration that was a very interesting course um, I had a course on appreciation of modern art, by the way, okay, which uh, I still remember <laughs> as uh, something fantastic because, I, first of all, I never expected there can be such a course in IIT, but when I saw that, I said, oh, I've got to go for this, uh, and this is really great. Um, I still have the painting that we had to draw as a final project that we had to do, which is in, in Hyderabad, <laughs> and I preserved that. Great journey, I fondly remember. And in 1984, uh, sorry, nine, uh, 2014, when we had this Pan IIT uh, conference in uh, Toronto, um, that was another great event. Uh, Pradeep Khanna was there. Um, then uh, Vijay Aywali was there, uh, who's all, all of them. The call, Nemi Banthia was there as a speaker. And um, so, you know, that was such a nice conference. For, uh, uh, for us to see you know, what we could do. I was a program chair, so, and I think Vijay was also involved in a very important activity, uh, I think in the case, in, in finalizing the conference facility and all. Uh, Pradeep came all the way from Australia, Nemi came all the way from Vancouver, uh, and there were seven IIT directors who came, uh, and there were about at least uh, four uh, presidents from universities in Canada who came. It was like a mixing of minds. And one of the topics out there was on, you know, how does industry and academia interact with each other? What are the challenges and what are the things to learn out there? Many of those challenges still hold true even today. And uh, there are an ongoing set of challenges and how to make it better and better. And um, that was, a, and again, an event, an IIT alumni event for me worth remembering. From Memorial, I came back to uh, TCS, to India, to TCS, even though I had an offer on PhD at the University of uh, Massachusetts at Amherst. Um, but I came back to India and joined uh, you know, TCS uh, to be a programmer. And programming was a fantastic thing. You know, we had an ICL machine in IIT Delhi, which was, uh, and we had punched cards. We had to do Fortran programming. And, uh, you know, it was, it's just a very good feeling just to do programming, you know, and uh, getting to that nice AC room is in a, such a hot environment outside in Delhi. Uh, it was a privilege to go there. And, you know, carrying punch cards in the hand was like, you know, you have achieved something. <laughs> it was uh, that kind of a feeling. And uh, of course, we learned programming. And when we joined TCS, many of us, uh, or in, in general programming, we were actually learning programming on the fly. You know, one week you had to learn a new program, whether it was like COBOL or C or whatever, right? So it was the learning curves were very high once we get into the industry. Um, what I would also like to say is a little bit of my journey, which Pradeep has asked me. Um, 
I basically worked in about uh, three main companies besides TCS. I was in uh, Unilever in India, uh, head of the supply chain for frozen desserts. I was in Oracle. I was a product manager for uh, global available to promise product, a part of the supply chain product. Um, then I was, um, I came back, did a second master's uh, in uh, social innovation at University of Waterloo. So I'm in mid, mid, middle of my career. Uh, and that was a kind of, you know, I wanted to take a break to reflect on my life really. <laughs> that was really the reason for taking up the second program and get to understand, you know, how do we deal with uh, social issues and how do we look at uh, social innovation? And innovation, of course, today is a word that is used widely. Um, and uh, there is, uh, you know, everybody has their own view of what uh, would make it a better world. And we are all doing a little bits and bytes of uh, making that happen. and and. So who are the influencers? How does the system work? We looked at three challenges. You know, uh, One was that um, challenges of old age uh, in Canada, challenges of mental health in Canada, challenges of um, new immigrants to Canada. These were three things and there were other topics later on, but these are the topics that uh, you know I was a little bit more closer to. And in particular, the issues of new immigrants to Canada. Then, um, from there, right now I'm in TCS, and you know this is the second time I'm third time actually I'm back in TCS. So first I went to, to Memorial, uh, and then I came back and rejoined TCS, and then after many years through these various companies, I'm back in TCS. But just before this, I also did a startup immediately after the social innovation program called Citizen Center. It is based on an open government concept, so it is based on the fact that. Um, you know, there is, uh, there is going to be politics anywhere, any, anyhow, okay, that is anywhere given, but then you got to have a platform by which it's easy to interact between the government and a citizen, elected government and the citizen. In terms of basic issues, it, should, it could be like a dent in the road in front of one's house and, you know, how do we get uh, uh, somebody to look at it at a very, very local level to uh, issues which are concerning, let's say, the education policy uh, in, in, in a given province. So there are various issues that concern different people. And how do we express that very in a very open format and get results? So we did that for one year. I was a co-founder, uh, but we were a bit early during our times for in 2015. Now in Co-Innovation Network, uh, what I do is I lead um, a set of programs with academia and with startups and VCs worldwide. Uh, we have got IT Delhi, by the way, is one of our key partners. Number of interesting projects we are doing at IIT Delhi. Many of the other IITs are our partners. All the other IITs, and the older IITs are our partners. Um, I am A, so I'm not Mitra is there, so that is a partner <laughs> who's out here. Uh, Nemi Bantia is here, I see Impacts, they are our partner. Very pri privileged to have such partners here. Coursera, by the way, uh, what uh, Ruchira was saying, they are a partner. Uh, LinkedIn Learning is a partner. Udemy is a partner in the learning space. So we've got n number of partners around the world. Um, and um, we are really looking at changing the game for our customers through this concept of open innovation. So we are embracing ideas from all around us. So we have in the interest of time, I will have to ask you to uh, wind up now and we will organize another session with you on innovation. Okay, mm -hmm. sounds good. Let me now, know. <laughs> in summary, what I can say is that what Raju does is he does the winding and dining whereas the poor academias in you know industry try to collaborate with each other. Would that be a right description of your job? So I'm happy to help you out in the whining and dining part, you know, no problem at all. So that is like only one aspect of it, which is like the <laughs> aspect of it. The, the truer aspect is, you know, how, how does everyone contribute to their best? In this I whole tell you. So for everybody's uh, information, in the month of December, we had organized uh, a global forum 
which was looking at what is the new normal and then looking at various <coughs> aspects of the new normal and looking at where we are and raju was one of the speakers and so was ruchira at that particular forum um now looking at where we are in the journey the new normal definition seems to be getting extended 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 and redefined redefined so we may in a couple of weeks time have another version as i call it as a checkpoint for a december as to where are we in the journey since december and we would and we had a session for innovation over there and let's pick up the discussion with raju also as one of the speakers over there so let's give a big round of applause to raju raju lovely to have you over from toronto and please keep the call to yourself <laughs> we are quite happy with that so there are a lot of sports possible in the code by the way i know i know i know i know in fact my my one of my cousins uh, they are of course in vancouver where the temperature is very mild barring this year when there was so much of heat um and then uh, my cousin's daughters are now all becoming ski champs over there you know some some of the aspects of snow that we are talking about you know mm-hmm. so thank you once again and now we move on to the next person on the agenda today and i mentioned to you that there is a group of people who seem to be doing a lot of hard work now whether they are actually doing hard work or not i don't know because i am sitting in australia mm. i am in a lockdown so let's have a chat today with one of the ec members who also happens to be the president of the iit delhi alumni association but apart from that he's a lovely guy and i really you know like uh, interacting with him you know please give a round of applause to kalpen kalpen over to you and we would like to hear about your journey post iit thank thanks pradeep uh, i i would love to change your impression but i know you are a very tough taskmaster so it's not going to be easy to change the impression that you carry about people as to what they do uh, having said that uh, one thing i must admire up front is uh, whether i say good evening good morning good afternoon but i know that very shortly we need to say good night to pradeep but he will still be awake for next 2 3 hours now this is the kind of enthusiasm which we really need for the association but uh, uh, right now let me just uh, spend a few minutes uh, uh, speaking about what i have done or rather what i have not done in life because uh, every time somebody asks me to talk about the career i very often start saying that i have more number of years not working than uh, number of years for which i have worked and if i say that for last 35 years i have not worked for more than 20 years now this is of course a mystery that someone who has uh, done his btech from iit delhi and an mba from iim ahmedabad probably the two best qualification one can think of at least in this country and of course having worked with companies like unilever johnson and johnson british gas etc i i all I, i would summarize it in probably one sentence that your life doesn't go the way you try to plan it out and therefore one should not start the career with a sense of entitlement it is back to what brand names you carry with you and this is something which probably i learned the way hard way but i will not get into the details of it uh, all that i can say that i once i had a chat with uh, pradeep and uh, i thought it would go on for probably 5 10 minutes since i was speaking to him for the first time and it went on for 40 45 minutes so i realized that someone like pratik who is so super busy if he can give me 45 minutes i am sure there is something worth saying that i have which i should share with others now having said this in fact you are speaking or you are listening to a person who feels cold even in mumbai and i hear temperatures of minus 10 and 20 and 30 i really don't know what that means or whether i'll ever be able to survive even for a few seconds there life has been slightly different life has been rather very very different i came from uh, amdavad to iit after having done one year of engineering because till the time i joined the engineering college i didn't even know that there was something better than the best college in gujarat and it was called iit so i decided to go and join iit fortunately i could uh, prepare myself with one book which contained all three subjects maths physics chemistry and english so with 20 rupees investment and 3 days of hard work 
I walked into IIT Delhi. The story was, uh, well, I also had fascination to see my name written on the hostel board of mess secretaries and general secretaries. So, summer really didn't take the academic so very seriously, which only I realized at the end of four and a half years that an institute like I am Ahmedabad wouldn't even touch me with a barge board because till then only the toppers had gone to IIMs. But having said that, I, I actually walked into IIM Ahmedabad without even a day's preparation or without spending a rupee. And that's something probably gave enormous confidence, which was lifelong, that if I decided to pursue or chase something, I would probably be able to do it. And that's precisely where the arrogance sets in, that things start happening your way and you start taking it for granted that now I will decide how my life will be. And that lesson I learned within first 10 years itself, that uh, life too went on a, such a roller coaster. So I... I started my career with Godrej, a very unique person who, who got confirmed in the morning and resigned in the afternoon because I had this fascination to join a multinational. And I was uh, unfortunately thrown out of IIM Ahmedabad placement because I got two jobs a bit too soon. And therefore, I couldn't really take a look at even some of the multinationals I was interested in. Now, having received a lot of thrashing from my own seniors of IIM Ahmedabad, I nonetheless joined Johnson & Johnson and I worked in an interesting, very American, typical American culture uh, for three years. Uh, I was the youngest product manager there. From Johnson & Johnson, I went to Unilever, uh, typical uh, European um, behemoth, multinational. It was in top 20 those days. And I worked for about six years in a in a completely different culture. And that was the first time I realized how organization culture, the milieu, it really affects the way people work and conduct themselves on the job. So right from I, which was more prominent in uh, Johnson & Johnson, I had to switch over to we. If I had ever said we in Johnson & Johnson, my boss would look at me and say, who's the other person with you? And that's something which... Uh, which probably did not work in Unilever, where if somebody said, I, then they would wonder that, what are we doing here with you, if, if everything is being done by you. But that was an interesting lesson, and I think probably the best grinding and best uh, understanding came from uh, wonderful systems of both the organizations, j, &J as well as Unilever. Uh, having said that, uh, uh, it, it came uh, crashing within one year, and uh, in my hurry to rise a bit too soon, too fast, and everything coming up uh, much ahead of its time, I, I had some uh, serious health issue and I went straight uh, for four years hibernation. I had to change my track because by then, uh, I had honestly, unfortunately, I, I quote unquote say unfortunately because I had already become a CEO before I, I crashed and that's why I could not adjust to the gap of four years and not people not even wanting to make me even a vice president. So I actually gave up too many good opportunities uh, uh, while bargaining. I had to change my entire field and I went from conventional manufacturing FMCG uh, orientation to uh, internet. And by, by grace of uh, God, hard work, uh, I became a chief operating officer at Credit Gas Broadband within three years. But all in all, summarily, I worked for just 13 years out of 35. And uh, I have lived for more than 15 years in complete hibernation, like a recluse. And in last 10 years, since the time I have started seeing a slightly better part of my health, I decided to look outside my bedroom window and that's where I started doing alumni association activities because that's the only external window I enjoy uh, and connectivity with the rest of the world that I enjoy. So it's not only IIT Delhi Alumni Association where I'm the president, I'm also president of IIM Ahmedabad Alumni Association of Mumbai chapter and uh, that's probably the largest chapter with more than 6,000 alumni, more than 50% of the strength and that's almost now eight years running. So all that I can say is that my expertise is in running alumni association chapters. 
and if i am not able to convince pradeep at the end of this one year i think it would be a big failure for me so oh, i absolutely lovely to talk to you kalpain and you see the bottom line what really it shows is that how you know basic values how important they are for all of us and also that how you know in whatever fields that we are working in we find our own passions and we kind of keep kind of changing and you know turning till we find the right slot for us and that is the nature of all of us so so one question i i want to ask you is because you have the roles of both iit delhi as well as iim amdabad how best are we able to leverage these two you know? in in fact that's something uh, is very interesting uh, pradeep to the extent that i consider that uh, alumni associations are the real strength actually alumni are the real strength of any institute and i would say with all modesty that just couple of hours back we heard professor rangopal rao wherein he said that uh, today if i remove my alumni from iit delhi then iit delhi will become like any other new iit now this is a very powerful message that he has delivered that what what is expected of the alumni by the institute and therefore what is it that alumni are really in a position to deliver back to the institute of course first thing uh, we all try to say that uh, we need to return the value to the society but we can probably start with the institute itself network is net worth and that is something which we have seen and witnessed over a period of time over a period of interactions and we have been able to negotiate trickiest of situations at imm love that place wherein alumni have played very significant role in negotiating bureaucratic labyrinth or getting iim bill passed or things like that in terms of contribution and voluntary contribution in terms of effort in terms of resources in terms of uh, helping the institute to grow further i think alumni have a very significant role to play and this is something where i wish and if i can i would love to bring this two mighty institutes together because there are a lot of synergies on one hand iit delhi has a brilliant startup ecosystem on other hand iim amdavad has probably globally acknowledged uh, incubation center called cia if you are able to do some such similar initiative on a slightly more organized way slightly larger scale i think we would be creating enormous value not only for our alumni but for both the institutes and for the society and for the nation so i'm very confident i'm very hopeful and we have some plans which are afoot where we would love to involve all of you and uh, everyone is welcome with the ideas suggestions that we can pursue thank you very much and that is the way forward you see we have to make 1 plus 1 is equal to 11 and not 2 that is that is where we need to look for partnerships as we kind of you know scale up and bring and get together the whole community on a platform kind of thing so thank you very much uh, kalpen and a big round of applause for kalpen i enjoy always talking to him uh, at an intellectual level you know and so therefore uh, i'm sure that you would have enjoyed uh, his discussions as well now moving on to the next item on the agenda today as we go down a journey of you know rebuilding gcc and the global platform there are a couple of things that have been kicked into motion one is that to start appointing ambassadors for each geography you know where it makes sense now what we find is that the bulk of the alumni are in two places as i mentioned the us as well as in india then you got places like canada singapore and so on and so forth which have got some large concentrations and but when you start looking at us also you got the west coast and you got the east coast also you know and there is a equally good spread of alumni across both so what we have done is that we have now got gcc ambassadors who are members of this community um who are now going to be ambassadors for 
US West Coast, US East Coast, Canada, Singapore, Africa. And when we talk of Singapore, it is Singapore and ASEAN. And of course, Japan and UK. Today, what I want to do is to announce that for uh, US West Coast, Arpit will be the uh, GCC ambassador for US West Coast. And what is really the role of an ambassador? He then becomes the single point of contact for IIT Delhi alumni for that particular geography. Of course, it is not limited only to that because wherever his networks work. And what that means is that the, the person then builds up the database. You know, he also uh, you know, organizes or you know, gets the community together and as well as different parts of engagement before leading on to value creation. Likewise, for uh, the US East Coast, we have Sunil and Tarun both as co-ambassadors for the US West Coast. And the advantage that these people have is they also have the mentors, you know, the earlier you know, advisory board members and senior members who've been active in GCC last year. So for Africa, we have Neeraj. For Singapore and ASEAN, we've got Priyadarshi and Samath. Now between them, um, you know, at the moment, the thinking is was really up to the two of them to work out who wants to kind of look after ASEAN, rest of ASEAN and Singapore. But essentially at the moment, uh, the way forward looks like that Priyadarshi will look after Singapore. Um, oh, sorry, not Smurt, but um, what is our man from uh, Nawal? Nawal will be the person looking after uh, the rest of ASEAN, but I leave it for the, both of them to decide, and it doesn't have to be exclusive. Australia and New Zealand, I will anyway cover, and I will anyway get somebody else to look after Australia and New Zealand per se. And for UK, you know, I will have a discussion with uh, both our spiritual leader as well as an academic leader, you know, Vijay, as well as uh, uh, Manmohan. Um, and, and likewise, for other uh, uncovered geos, you know, I will talk about this further. In the same way, we have started small group activity, uh, SIGs being the acronym. And we have um, Smart from Singapore, who will be one of the co-leaders for mental health. Why mental health? Because mental health is a serious issue in the current pandemic times. I mean, it is as more and more people are, you know, feeling the economic pain as well as health pain, as well as, you know, isolation issues, as well as technology, higher take up of technology, mental health is becoming a very, very big issue at the moment. You know. So, and Smart, uh, you know, with his passion, you know, it's been mm -hmm. lovely to have it. Smart has been, you know, I must appreciate, you know, he's been taking so much of an interest in terms of connecting or, you know, providing email IDs to me, and, you know, telling me this, that so-and-so is going to attend. I really want to put on record my appreciation of the effort that I see you know, Smurf already putting in, you know, in the last one week or so. So big round of applause for Smurf, please. Um, so we, on the other hand, also we do realize that the startup ecosystem is the very uh, blood of, you know, today's economy. Of course, in the startup system, you know, I give a very, very interesting example, you know, when I speak uh, at various, various conferences and I say that, look, when it comes to a large organization, let's say, you know, IBM or Accenture, one of these people, when they see an opportunity in the marketplace, what they start doing is they start collecting teams of people, you know, one from this uh, industry, one from this uh, department, one from this department. And by the time they get all the people together, the opportunity is already gone. You know? hmm. On the other hand, when a startup sees an opportunity, they go straight in the delivery mode, you know. They don't even look at what the requirement is, you know. So what we need is actually the fusion of the two, which is 
you know, you need the process maturity of a larger organization fused with the nimbleness and agility of a startup. You know? So that's why while startups, you know, is the way to go forward, but they need appropriate kind of, you know, uh, interactions with uh, mentors and the ecosystem around them kind of a thing. So in the startup arena, we will have Anshuman uh, from San Francisco, who will be one of the co-leaders for the startup ecosystem. In the same way, uh, you know, we will have, as we talked about, having an overall communication strategy, an integrated communication strategy, you know, which will be part of an overall engagement strategy. And there is different aspects to that, you see. And those aspects will be one is the newsletter, because end of the day, newsletter and you know these uh, events that we are having are just touch points in building a community. Uh, but we have seen that last year Aneban has done some excellent work in you know the newsletter side of the story. I'm delighted to you know that he has accepted uh, this responsibility again this year to take this forward. So Anuban will continue to drive the newsletter side. In addition, you see, we do need to look at what is happening on the social media side because you see, we've got multiple social media platforms. First of all is that the proliferation of multiple platforms, which are in a sense overlapping, not only overlapping, but they also tend to fragment. You know, we need to have, a, you know, kind of integrated approach. So from that perspective, uh, Neeraj, will be, you know, kind of working towards that particular objective. And having said that, you know, whether it is a WhatsApp group or whether it's a LinkedIn group or whether it's a Facebook uh, group, I will encourage all the geography leaders to start these groups. But before doing that, please check with me to make sure there is no existing group because we don't want multiple groups, you know, performing the same thing, you know. Number two is that, you see, we have to remember end of the day that a social media group which is carrying the ITDA logo and the word ITDA is technically the property of IIT Delhi Alumni Association. It must, must, must conform to, you know, the relevant norms because there can be legal implications tomorrow for such kind of a thing. So therefore we have to make sure that you know any groups that are set up are set up only you know after discussion with me and i have added as the admin to those groups over there and then we will get them you know appropriately validated in terms of conformance you know because because the world that we're living in you know it, it's a very very interesting world so that be the case then we are at end we've actually got one minute left before and so you know, we will continue the discussion. We will continue with our weekly meetings for the next three meetings at the very minimum. Because we are in that phase, you know, where we are, you know, rebuilding and growing GCC. So any last minute comments anybody would like to have? Otherwise, I'll be delighted to close the meeting one minute before. Yeah, just one thing, you know, uh, we already please, have please, a like... Please introduce yourself to the group. Uh, uh, I am Arpit. Um, uh, I'm uh, based out of Seattle uh, and run uh, Actionable Analytics Group as a CDO. Just one comment here that uh, we already have a IIT Delhi uh, Alumni Association LinkedIn group. And I think there are about 10,000 or at least it shows on LinkedIn people. So maybe you should take over that group as well because that will help us bootstrap a lot of people actually. Just so, that's so Alpid, I think we discussed this question also in WhatsApp and to my response to that is that that group is already existing in nature. You see, GCC has a very specific purpose of making a global platform. The way I see is that I'm very well aware and I'm a member of that particular group. That group has a very large dominance of US and to a certain extent from India. As from a GCC perspective, we do need to get people from other countries into the floor. You know, there is number of people from Europe, there are people, you know, who are based in Thailand in kind of, uh, you know, other places over here, which seem to get lost because surely because the numbers are very large. So I am very comfortable in this particular situation after looking at it, that to have a separate GCC platform for a LinkedIn group, but I'm going one step further. 
I'm saying that, you see, if, for example, U.S. West Coast, you know, does want to have a Lincoln group, then what I would want you to do is to discuss with me and we look at whether any such groups exist or not exist. And, you know, I will go by your judgment in terms of whether you want to do it or not. That is up to your this thing. But if you do decide to go, then let's have a discussion and then look at what is the way forward. Okay, so again, responding back, what we have to do is to leverage any such groups which are already in existence. You know? Because there's, for example, a pan ID group in LinkedIn, which has got about 27,000 members. You know? So these are large groups which have certain objectives, but there are very strong synergies, just like us collaborating with, say, I am Ahmedabad or I am, or I am group per se kind of a thing. This is what the Brave New World is all about partnering, but at the same time, making sure that we are not splintering our own or fragmenting our own efforts and reach. So any other comments? Uh, in, solution, Pradeep. Yes, in the process, we've exceeded by two minutes, but that's all right. So Vijay, please tell me. Yeah, uh, so Vijay Willi from Toronto. Um, <clears throat> uh, the, most of these groups are you know, in existence everywhere. So to uh, give authenticity, so I had suggested that, you know, the, the official group should be given the IIT Delhi Alumni Association logo. Uh, so people know that it, that is the uh, representing and as well as, you know, it will be easier for the communicating with the uh, Delhi office or with uh, the president and you. Absolutely. Because from a branding perspective and from positioning perspective, very, very important that we, you know, all of us, the authentic groups or so as to say, the original groups should have the logo, should have, you know, that so we, we really communicate the same message. And Neeraj, this is uh, input for you as we go down, as we look forward into the social media strategy side of the story. Yes. So if that be the case, then uh, folks, three minutes over time, that is a fabulous achievement. So thank you all for joining in today. And we will have some more interesting people joining in next time. And let's make it happen. Not make it happen, but it's already happening. Take care. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good night in your part of the world. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you, everyone.